well, it feels more like a spring day outside than a day at the end of November going into Christmas. It is in the upper 60s to low 70s. We still have not had a freeze, which is kind of scary. There's no freeze in the forecast for the next 10 days, no precipitation in the forecast. So I'm getting a little nervous because we really need the rain. Nevertheless, if you wanna be outside, then it's absolutely, it could not be more beautiful. There's no wind. Stuart, in fact, would you mind circling around and showing this absolutely gorgeous maple over at my neighbor's? at my friend Carrie's. She was my son's nursery school teacher growing up. They've lived here about as long as we have. And then yesterday, here's a little peek in, in, inside our weekend. Yesterday, Hubs and I went down to the Wichita Mountains and we did a little bit of hiking. We, we gave a test drive to his new knee uh, to see how far he could go. And he did, he was slow, but he did pretty well. And we had a little picnic and and took the canoe out, which needs to go back. But it's kind of obviously everybody's really active because the weather's so nice, including the pickleball players across the street. So this is such a fun thing in our neighborhood. Um, our neighbors across the street have a tennis court, which is very uncharacteristic for our neighborhood. And they recently had it redone and Right now you can play pickleball or tennis, but pickleball seems to be the crowd favorites right now. Stuart can't wait to get over there and get on the on the registry. And they so kindly have, have let the neighborhood use it. So there is somebody always out there playing pickleball. It's just, it's so fun and makes me love my neighborhood even more. So today my intent is to kind of show you what's going on as we're kind of in a transitional mode between the end of fall, November and Thanksgiving and Christmas. So here's what, what is going on today. And da, 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 here's my question of the day. Um, I want to know what the temperatures are where you live because it is uncharacteristically warm here. It makes me nervous. So please tell me as always what zone you're in and what kind of weather you've been having and then whether or not you're able to get out this weekend and get up your Christmas lights and such. So there's my question of the day. Um, so in addition to transitioning between Thanksgiving and all of the pumpkins and trying to get my wreaths up, I'm having to do a lot of watering. So I've got my hose out, this giraffe hose reel. I found sound like a commercial, but this, by the way, is also on my Christmas list. If you go to lindavotter.com under shop, I've got all of my Christmas items that I've been telling you about. Please go there. Stuart will put a link up above. Um, and we are adding to it almost daily. So there there you go there's my there's my plug for things that I know you guys will ask me about in the future so it has just been so dry so I planted I in fact I think I did a video a while back of how I planted all sorts of hyacinths and things from Brex in in this window box and then I planted lots of pansies and the pansies I, I was horrified when I came out this morning and saw how droopy the pansies were because they were it's been also very very windy and so they were dried out and not looking too happy and so I really had to water this down also the kales that I put in here and the ornamental cabbages, they also were very, very dry. So I had to give everything a really deep, intensive watering, including this pot, which has Southern Living Agapanthus in it. And I haven't had to take it in because it really has not been cold enough. We haven't had a freeze. In fact, this is a gorgeous coleus that I think of as an indicator plant. And it's not drooping at all because we haven't had any kind of freeze. What I can do uh, in addition to just in addition to watering and trying to keep an eye on things to make sure they get established is I can really definitely now st start transitioning out all of my my pumpkins and gourds that the squirrels 
have just been delighting in them. So I, I don't know what this program is, you guys, but I think it's wonderful. I noticed that my neighbors over here had, and a number of my neighbors on the street, had all of their pumpkins put out at the curb, and I wasn't really sure why, kind of like we do with our Christmas trees afterwards. So I asked a friend of mine, a neighbor who was walking by, and he said that he there apparently was a flyer that had gone around that somebody is coming by and picking up all of the pumpkins. For what purpose, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna guess it's probably for the zoo or something because they will use it as food and they probably have the resources to do it. So at any rate, these are the last two small ones. The two big kahunas right there, the Big Max Stewart is gonna have to heave ho down to the street because those are, those are just, uh, uh, a herniated disc for me waiting to happen. So I am, like I say, watering everything here. And then tomorrow, this is one of those kinds of things where I finally have gotten smart. Now, I let me back up a little bit. I change my interior Christmas and seasonal decor a lot. I mix it up every single year. The outside, I love it to be traditional, and I do the same thing every year. It's very formulaic. I'm sure I did a video on it last year, a holiday video. And what I do is I hang four wreaths, and these, by the way, they are artificial because my the front of my house faces south. And if I use real wreaths, they would dry out in a heartbeat given our winds and high temperatures and strong sun. So I have four of these wreaths that are all lit and all four of them will hang on the first story windows. So I've got two that will hang on my living room window and how they hang. I had this done years ago and it was one of the best investments I made. I just got someone to put some grommets in the ribbon that hangs them. And I did this to all four wreaths. And then all I have to do is take the grommets and hang them on the, on the nails that are just above these windows. And there are similarly placed nails above the dining room windows. That way I know they all are even, they all hang at exactly the same length they for both indoor and outdoor display. And they do that every year because this is very traditional for me. And I love the classic way it looks, especially when it snows. Stuart, we might, maybe we'll be able to dig up a picture of what they look like when it snows. But I have four of them. So here, here though is my tip. Every year, I have hung these myself. Hubs and I have hung these ourselves. And now I've decided that I'm not gonna do that anymore, that it's probably time for me to have somebody else do that. I, I feel def definitely like I'm physically capable of doing it, but I'm gonna be smart and I'm gonna let somebody else do it. So I've got some people coming that are gonna come tomorrow and they're gonna help me get them all lit and hung and plugged in. Now I've got two on uh, this window and then I have two on the dining room window on the other side of my front door and then I have another really fun wreath that I'll be hanging on my front door and I'll show you it later. For right now, I can't bear to take down that terrain wreath. I may just fill it with some greenery and things. I'm not really sure. And then all of my lights and everything for the front will just be on these five wreaths, two on either, either side of the front door and the one on the on the on the front door itself. And those are very, the, those lights vary in size. Now, if, if you go out and you kind of look, Stuart, if you don't mind kind of panning, you'll see I, pl I have planted lots and lots of pansies. And we've pretty much done it all around the, the front part of the flower beds in the foreground. 
and they're they're really still blooming pretty intensively and once i start giving them a feed in january and february which i will actually do then they will put on a show of their own before any of the tulips and things begin. Stuart, if you don't mind, would you kind of pan around so people can get an idea of how beautiful that vibrant red will look against, at least I think so anyway, tell me what you think against the house. It looks very traditional, very kind of English, I think. But a lot of the, the shrubs, the things in the front flower beds, they, they still look very, very lush and very, very green. All of the hellebores, obviously all of the, the evergreens, but the spirea, it hasn't lost any of its leaves yet. The encore azaleas back there, they still have big fat buds on them. And as long as it stays, I guess, warm and doesn't freeze, they'll probably just continue to bloom. I still need to move around and transplant some of the foxglove. But the, the front yard is just, it's, it's just really kind of holding its own. And I think the evergreens look really, really nice. Here comes Hubs in Dot. <laughs> he, he is driving, he's driving Dot today, my little Fiat with the top down because it's so beautiful and because he's got the canoe hooked up to his. So some other things that are coming up this week, the rest of all of the pumpkins will go down to the street. Um, on, on Wednesday, I hope to go get a Christmas tree and I pro I'm gonna do it in one of two different places, either at, at Bricks down here while I got all of my pumpkins or there's another really, really fun, wonderful area that has pop-up shops and all sorts of things that so I can shop and get my Christmas tree and a beer simultaneously. It's in one of the cooler, hipper parts of Oklahoma City. What's that area called, Stuart? Do you know? It, I guess it is part of Midtown, but if you're coming to Oklahoma City, you definitely want to visit there. And the other reason I like it is because those pop-up shops are all local places, and it's so important to shop local right now. We're also going to be visiting some of the other shops up and down Western Avenue, which is within walking distance of, of my house, and some of the places that we'll be shopping for Christmas presents this year. So, Stuart, have I forgotten anything? don't forget you guys to let me uh let me know what's going on in your neck of the woods whether or not you've had a freeze yet whether or not you're you too are kind of worried about the weather i still have more bulbs to plant in the back however so i'm i'm i guess i'm still glad that the weather hasn't turned but i am definitely ready to get my jingle on are you Stuart? And if you haven't already really paid attention to it, definitely make sure that you check out the new animation, our Christmas animation that's up. It's my favorite of all four animations. So there you go. There's my, my little uh, vlog, my vlog for today. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Well, if you've held on this long, here is your fashion epilogue for today. Now, Stuart was just commenting, we've just finished the video, and he, was, he has been meaning to tell me that it smells absolutely amazing with all the people doing stuff on the street, and somebody is burning a pinon fire, which is just our very favorite, so it's, it's a lovely day. Um, let's see, my drink du jour is my Trader Joe's flavored cranberry li uh, lime juice seltzer water because I, we go through these these like crazy, don't we, Stuart? Um, my hat, this is my favorite hat of the moment. This is off of Amazon, which reminds me to tell you guys, go to my website and go to, we'll put try to put a link, and there'll be a link in the description for my website. And if you go under shop, I have my Christmas gift list. And this will be one of the things that's on the Christmas gift list, in addition to some other recommendations that I've made that Stuart's made that Carrie, Carrie has made and we will yeah there's a, we'll try to put a link and a card up above but also we are adding to it almost daily so you want to check back regularly make sure to sign up for my newsletter and everything while you're there but I digress uh, my top is thrifted it is Gap but I got it at Goodwill 
My britches are also thrifted, but they have been updated. So I promise to show you what they look like after I put these really fun patches on them. And actually, it was Jamie's mom, Susu, who did the sewing for me. I got, uh, I found an old but very vibrant and fun shirt at Goodwill and we chopped it up and made patches and so they are my patches for my jeans which are also thrifted so that's a really fun Christmas project if you're handy with a needle and we'll also put a link above to the video where I described doing this process and what my uh, inspiration was. My boots are just Uggs booties. I love them. I've had them for years. They are one of my most comfortable pair of boots. My bracelets. My bracelets. Uh, this came from a lady that I helped down the street one day and she gifted this to me. And my bracelet, this is one of the things that's on my Christmas gift list or this line of jewelry. This is from Janet Mavick and her Nature Inspired Jewelry. And and my earrings. Oh, these earrings are kind of fun. I got these at a gift shop in at a museum in New Mexico, and I love them. They're turquoise. So there you go. There's my fashion epilogue for today. <laughs>